Thank you very much. So yeah, hello everyone, and thank you for coming. Uh, so first, a few words about the company. I will talk about, uh, fun, a few words about the company. So the company develops the two products, Sire Investigate and Sire Federate. Sire Investigate is a, web, is a web application which supports the task of uh, investigative intelligence, and it is based on Elasticsearch and, uh, and Sire Federate. It is used by different law enforcement and national security de departments worldwide. So first, I need to put into context in which the Sire Investigate platform is used in order to understand what drove the development of the Sire Federate plugin. So Sire Investigate is uh, facing different uh, data, data challenges. It has to support different kinds of uh, users. For example, it can be a police or a law uh, agency. It can be some corporate. Uh, final, uh, then those users want to analyze different kinds of data. It can be unstructured data, like what you would find on the web. It can be semi-structured data, like the logs of an application. And finally, it can be uh, structured data, like the financial records of a company. Then those users want to investigate different kinds of threats. For example, for a police, it can be to find case of human or good trafficking. For a corporate, it can be to understand if their product is used in any way to launder money. So the task of investigative intelligence is better described using this uh, diagram. So first, a user has to identify the problem that he wants to investigate. Then, by exploring the data associated with that, that, with that problem, the user is able to understand what is in the data, what are the important fields, what are, uh, how documents are uh, interconnected. And by building this uh, cognitive data model, the user is able to formulate better the query that he used at the beginning to identify the problem. And by evaluating the results that he got back, he can, find, for example, find uh, additional problems related to the initial one that are worth uh, looking into. So in light of the previous slide, a system that supports the task of investigative intelligence must be flexible in integrating and exploring different kinds of data. Also, the system must be highly performant in order to not impede the discovery process. Indeed, that discovery process is very interactive and it doesn't work if the user has to wait five minutes each time to get a response to a request. So current information retrieval systems are very, are very good at supporting the task of full text search and also at analyzing uh, numerical data. However, they lack uh, rational and graph capabilities. These capabilities are crucial when in analyzing the kind of data that users of the Sire Investigate platform are, in, are interested in. So in this picture comes Sire Federate because it brings rational capabilities to information retrieval systems. So in today's talk, I will present you first some uh, joint queries. Then I will go uh, I will present some of the challenges in implementing rational capabilities over an information retrieval system. And I will finish by presenting you different uh, internal aspects of the Sign Federate plugin. First, I need to give you the, uh, some basic concept of the Sign Federate uh, plugin. So when you want to join two indices, index A with index B, we'll say that index A is the parent index or the parent search, depending on the context. And uh, index B is the child index or the child search. I will use a Venn diagram in order to illustrate the logic behind expressing a join with Sign Federate. So first, you need to define the search over the parent index. Next, a search over the child index. And their intersection will be defined by the join condition. Therefore, the response of the join will be the subset of documents from the parent index that have fulfilled that uh, condition. So now I will present you a series of queries and benchmarks in order to show you the different capabilities of the Sign Federate uh, plugin. Uh, show, uh, displayed on the screen here is... Oh, okay. So, one second. Turn on laser. Yeah. So displayed on the screen here is a request that used the uh, Elasticsearch query language, and Sign Federate has uh, uh, extended this language to, in order to introduce a custom query called join. So in light of the previous slide, you must first define the search of the parent. So here, this is done over the positions indices, and it has two filters, the geo-bounding box, 
and the range query over the date field. Next, you have to define the child search. It is here again over the position indices, but it could have been over any other uh, index in the cluster. The exact set of filters that you use are omitted for readability purposes, but they are very similar to the previous two I have shown here. The only difference is that uh, the range query is over a different time period. Finally, the joint condition here is an equality between two fields, geotime hash from the parent index and geotime hash, again, from the child index. So that request is uh, defined over an artificially created data set of phone locations within a given area for a fixed time frame. Uh, this uh, request, this kind of request, is typical for users of the SAR Investigate platform. For example, a user may want to analyze phone records that uh, occurred in a given location, but at different uh, time intervals. So I have executed this uh, request in an Elasticsearch cluster containing 12 data nodes and 15 billion documents. The join itself process uh, 140 million documents on each side of the join. And on the right side of the screen here, I report the 90th percentile of the runs. So that request took 1.9 seconds. So you may be surprised at the time it took, but you have to realize that you are joining 140 million documents, which is quite a lot. And this benchmark has been designed to push uh, the Science Federate to its limits. But you, uh, in that uh, setup, you, uh, you, you can achieve subsequent uh, response time if you join about uh, 80 million documents in each side. Uh, I will use that request as a baseline for the, the next queries I will present you. So the, the other query I want to present is again a semi-join. Is a semi-join, and uh, the semi-join, as I didn't say earlier, but the semi-join is a type of join where you get only information from the parent index. Yeah? So here it is a, it is a semi-join coupled with an elastic search feature called runtime field. So a runtime field is a field that you declare at uh, query time. In this request here, I have declared two runtime fields, one for the parent index and the other one for the child uh, search. I have updated the joint condition to be, def to be uh, defined over the, over the runtime fields that I have declared. So that uh, request took uh, one second more than the baseline. The reason is the added cost of executing the script for each uh, document that you have to process when evaluating the join. The other query I want to present is an inner join coupled with an aggregation. So with Science Federate, it is possible to get information from the child index. So in order to do this, you have to project a field from the child index, and you have to use the project query close on the child search here, and you will project the field MSISDN, for example. That projected field is made available on the parent context. So for example, here, I can create an aggregation that could count the unique uh, values of the projected field MSISDN. So here, that request took much longer, 7.7 seconds. The, the reason for that is the computation of the inner join itself. Indeed, it is very costly to compute the Cartesian product between the parent search and the child search. The other query I want to present is again a semi-join, but this time uh, coupled with uh, look with a runtime field of type lookup. So the lookup runtime field is a feature from Elasticsearch, which allows you to uh, get information from another index. So for example, here, you want to get uh, information from the person index and retrieve the first name and last name fields. The, the relationship between uh, the, cur the current uh, indices, positions, and the target index person is made through these uh, fields here, MSISDN that you have to click that you have to declare in the runtime field. Then you can uh, retrieve, uh, you can show the result of this uh, lookup in the, as part of the search response using the fields close of the request. So on the right side of the screen now, you have the same request, but using only features from Elasticsearch, from, sorry, from Science Federate. So in order to do that, the same query, but only with Science Federate, you have to use explicitly two joins. On the bottom with the dashed line is the semi-join that I have been using so far. 
and above it in the solid box, you have the join against the inner join against the person index through which you get the first name and last name fields. Then you will use again the field close of the request in order to show the result of this uh, projection uh, as part of the search response. So I have executed these two requests four times, each time with a different number of documents being uh, returned. So I have, re I have returned 10 documents, 100, 1,000, and finally 10,000 documents. So here, the requests that use the lookup runtime field from Elasticsearch are much faster than the requests that use only uh, that use only Sign Federate in the inner join. The reason for that is that the lookup runtime field is much uh, lighter to compute. Indeed, it is only computed over the top k documents that you have to pro that you have to return af uh, as part of the search response. Uh, this is actually a core difference between the two approaches. You cannot create aggregations or queries over a, over a field of type uh, lookup. However, you can do these uh, operations over a field that you project with uh, Sign Federate. The sixth and final query that I want to present is a query that shows some graph analytics capabilities. So here, once again, I use the project query close in order to get the MSISDN values from the child index. And then I create, on the parent search, a runtime field that will count the number of MSISDN values that, uh, that you have projected that are related to the parent document. Then I create a range query over this uh, runtime field. So in effect here, this query will return you the subset of documents from the parent index, which are associated with at least two documents on the child index. So here you can see that you have access to the graph structure of the data, of the data when you have to express uh, your information need. Now I will present some of the challenges that uh, appear when you have to implement original capabilities inside the information neutral system. So when you want to join indices, you have two broad uh, approaches. Either you can do it at index time or you can do it at query time. Elasticsearch provides a few ways to do it at index time. For example, the enrich ingest uh, processor or the parent-child join. These two approach, uh, these two solutions are based on the same concept. Whenever you index a document, you have to index in the same shard any related documents. The consequence is that at query time, uh, you, you can achieve very fast search time. However, you have to pay for it with uh, larger indices and uh, costly data updates. So here, a data update is costly because each time you update a document, you need to re-index everything. So Sign Federate, Sign Federate took uh, the other approach of computing the join at query time. So in this approach, there is no extra cost related to data updates, nor to the index size. However, there is a search penalty, penalty that, you have, that you have to pay uh, due to the need of exchanging data between nodes of the cluster. This penalty is attenuated thanks to, uh, thanks to a query planning and to uh, various uh, performance optimizations. So when you want to, inform, uh, when you want to implement regional capabilities in, inside such an information data system, you need to bridge uh, the gap between two uh, data uh, regional between two data models. So you have on one side the document-centric data model, which is a model of, uh, of uh, information neutral systems. And on the other side, you have the data model of systems that are tra traditionally support uh, the joint uh, ca capability. So on, on the document-centric side, you query for a document and you retrieve a set of documents. This means that the unit, the unit of information that you have to process is fixed. It is a document. Now contrast this against the original data model, where you, have a, where you query for a row and you retrieve a table. Here, the unit of information is variable because uh, a row, indeed, can be built from any number of tables. So this gap between the two uh, data models has to be bridged over at different levels of the joint computation. So when you have to write the, the query, when you have to give the answer back uh, to the user. 
So in Science Federate, I will present you now how we represent uh, logically a join. This logical representation is used throughout the query planner. So when you want to join these two indices, we first uh, have two searches over the parent and child indices. Here you are on the doc document-centric model of the joint computation. Then you have to join the set of documents that you have retrieved. Here you went into the rational model of the computation. Once you have the result of that join, you need to communicate it back to the system. So in effect, you need to jump back into the document-centric model. And here you need a national fi an additional filter over the parent index. Now I will present some of the internals of the Science Federate plugin. First, I will give an overview of the different features of Science Federate. So Science, uh, Science Federate supports different types of joints. The semi join is a core operation because it's quite interesting. The, its complexity is linear with the size of the parent search. And also, the semi join can be cached uh, very efficiently into a bit set, which means that when, when the join has been uh, computed, it is as costly to evaluate as, uh, as a simple term query. I will go into uh, further detail uh, later on in this, on this. And also, Science Federate supports different kinds of joint strategies, which are used depending on the amount of documents that you want to join together. So now, I want to present you one of the joint strategies that are supported by Science Federate, which is the strategy where you partition the data over the cluster using a hash function. So on the left side of the screen, you have the logical representation of the join that I have introduced earlier. I will use it uh, in order to support the example. And on the right side of the screen here, you have an Elasticsearch cluster with three the data nodes. And the parent and child indices have uh, three shards. So first, you need to execute the searches over the parent and child indices in order to retrieve the set of documents that you have to process in order to answer the join. Next, you have a Nash partitioning function, which will be used uh, to uniquely identify nodes in the cluster. Here, this is illust illustrated using uh, color. Using this hash partition function, you will be able to associate a document with uh, one of the nodes in the cluster. So for example, here, the document from the child index is associated with the green node, uh, so on and so forth with the other documents that you have retrieved. The next step starts by exchanging data between nodes of the cluster. So this uses the hash partitioning function. Uh, the documents that were associated with a specific color will be sent to that node. So here, the green documents that uh, will be sent to that green node. And so on and so forth with the other documents. Then you have to compute uh, a join locally to each data node that has received uh, data from uh, throughout the cluster. I will explain uh, this uh, step further la later on. But so once the join has been computed, yeah, you need to communicate the result back to Elasticsearch. So this is achieved by sending the subset of documents that were matching the, the, the join back to their originating shard. Then you have a national filter which will uh, read the, the result of that join and create a bit set. This bit set will be uh, given to, uh, to Elasticsearch in, in order to let it know what document in the shard is a match for the joint query. So the other uh, internal aspect of Science Federate I want to present is the vectorization of the data processing. So in Science Federate, we store data into OFIP. The rationale is to reduce the strain on the Java garbage collector. Uh, this data is stored using a columnar fashion in order to facilitate different kinds of uh, operation over it. So in OFIP, you have vectors that represent fields uh, in, the, in, in the data that you want to process. For example, the field that you are joining on or the field that you want to project use, uh, when you do an inner join. So there are two main ways to uh, process this uh, data. Either you process the data one row at a time or you process it one column at a time. So here I will present you the, what happens when you, have, uh, when you process the data one row at a time. 
I will use this, uh, three these three layers, the application layer, the CPU cache layer, and finally, the main memory uh, layer. Here, the CPU cache layer is very simpli simplified, but in uh, practice, you have two levels or three levels of, uh, of the CPU cache. Also, you have to remember that the application, when it uh, reads from the CPU cache, it is much faster than when it reads from the main memory. So when you want to access this uh, first element here in the first uh, row of the, that column, blue column, what happens at the application level is that it will make a lookup into the cache. It is empty, so therefore you will have a cache miss. And then it will retrieve the relevant memory segment from the, off -heap memory, from the main memory. Then this memory segment will be put into the CPU cache. Now, if you want to read this other element in the same row, but uh, in, the, in another column, what happens at the application level is that it will be, again, a cache miss because the memory segment that is in the CPU cache is not the one that, that you have to read for that uh, data. So now, contrast this against the column at a time processing. Here, I jump directly to the state of the application where you have read the element from the main memory and uh, populated the, the CPU cache with that uh, memory segment. So now, if you want to read the next element in the column, here, the application, it will have a cache hit, in, uh, it will have a cache hit because the CPU cache has already the memory segment that, he, that you have to read, uh, that you have to read. So in the past, Science Federate was using the row at a time uh, processing approach, but we have decided to use the pipeline, the, the column at a time uh, processing approach in order to leverage the CPU cache. So in order to facilitate the processing of columns in the code, we have uh, introduced this uh, pipeline abstraction over it, where you start by, with a tap. A tap is followed by one or more operator, and then you finish with a sync. The tap will read from, uh, from the index, for example, and it will produce one or more batch. A batch contains uh, a fixed number of rows, and these rows are stored uh, into OFIP memory. Then these batch are sent to the, to, the, to the different operators, which will uh, scan columns, add a new column, remove one, whatever they need. Then the batch is given to, to the sync, which will be responsible in serializing that batch and sending it to whatever node in the cluster that uh, requires it. So now I want to show you how we created the pipeline for the inner join that used the hash partitioning function. So this pipeline is executed at, uh, when you have to evaluate the join locally on a data node. So on this data node, you have uh, information from the parent index here on the left side of the screen, and you have information from the child index here on the right side of the screen. So we start by processing the data from the child index, and we create an hash table. Here, the key of the hash table will be the field from the child index that you want to join on. Associated with each key will be the ordinals to rows where this key uh, op uh, occurred in. So for example, the key one occurred on those three rows of the child data. On the parent uh, data, we have the following columns. We have, we have the column that, uh, where you want to join on from the parent index. There is also metadata, which is used to uniquely identify a document in the cluster. So the, the pipeline starts with this uh, tab, where you read where you have to scan the column fr the, from the field that you want to join on from the parent index. Then you will probe the hash table. If uh, there is an entry in the hash table for that key, it means that the associated document is a match uh, for the uh, fulfills the joint condition. So here, the first two documents uh, have fulfilled the condition, but not the third one. So this tab outputted the following batch, that which has two uh, temporary columns. These columns have ordinals into the uh, have ordinals to the keys that were matching uh, the joint condition. Here, you have to notice that the ordinals to the key one in the parent index 
are duplicated three times, and the ordinals to the key tree in the, in the parent index are duplicate, duplicated twice. The reason for that is that the key one in the hash table was related to three documents, to three rows, sorry, and key three was related to two, the, two rows. So in effect here, you compute the Cartesian product between the parent data and the child data. Then we have an operator which will read the ordinals from the column into uh, uh, the ordinals into the child data and retrieve the values at the indicated rows. So this operator is used, for example, when you have, project, when you have to project the data from the child index, for example, the MSISDN field uh, in the request at the beginning of the talk. The next operator that, uh, that, we, uh, that we apply is, a, is an operator that will read the ordinals into the parent data and you will write down all the metadata uh, that the parent data has. So here you write the doc metadata, the doc metadata, the chart metadata, and finally the segment metadata. Next, the final step in the pipeline will be that sync, where I will read the chart column in order to know to which node of the cluster I have to send this uh, row back to. So for example, the, f the first three uh, rows are associated with the same shard, number one here, so therefore they will be sent to the node X of the cluster. Uh, the final uh, internal aspect of Sarin Federate I, I want to present is the query cache. So it is possible to cache the result of a semi join. The result is, a, is the subset of documents from the parent index, and therefore what you need to cache is a structure that allows you to encode this notion of subset. The bit set data structure is perfect for that, where you have an array of bytes, and the bit is equal to one if uh, the document is inside the set, and zero otherwise. Actually, this is what Lucene uh, does. They, uh, they use bit set in order to cache the result of queries. So when you want to make a lookup into this query cache, we need to, you need to compare the semantics between the query that you want to look up and the queries inside the cache. So we need to check uh, if the, the two joint queries have the same parent and child searches, if they have the same condition, and finally, if the version of the searches are the same. So a version is computed by hashing the bit set of a search. Uh, we have written a patent that uh, explains further this uh, semantic uh, caching of a join. Now I want to present uh, the result of a benchmark. I will use the same benchmark that I have uh, presented earlier of these uh, phone locations, but this, but this time I will use an Elasticsearch cluster with uh, 36 data nodes. And I will benchmark three queries. Each query will, uh, each query will uh, join two sets of uh, different sizes. So in the first query, each set will have 156 million documents. Second query, it will have, they will have 1 billion each. And finally, in the third query, they will have 2 billion documents each. Now, I want to, uh, what I want to show you first is the evolution over time of the performance of the uh, Sign Federate plugin. So at the beginning, when Sign Federate was using the row at a time uh, processing approach of the data, for example, the query tree, which is the largest in this uh, scenario, was taking nearly uh, 15 seconds. And then we have introduced the vectorization of the data processing, and we have seen significant uh, performance improvement. Uh, we have run this Elasticsearch on the latest uh, version of Elasticsearch and Sign Federate that is out uh, yeah, uh, that was out this month, and we have seen a further improvement by at least uh, 14 percent. Uh, now I will, I will focus on the benchmark that was run on the latest version of Elasticsearch and Federate. So the first query took 1.9 seconds. The second query took uh, five seconds. This represents uh, an increase by a factor of seven in the amount of documents that you have to join together and the runtime has increased by a factor of 2.6. The third query took uh, 7.6 seconds, which, which represents an increase by a factor of two of the amount of documents that you have to join, 
and uh, an increase by a factor of 1.5 of the, of the runtime. So here we can see that Sign Federate is able to scale sublinearly with the amount of documents that you have to join together. Uh, to, to, uh, to conclude this presentation, so I have shown you at the, at the beginning different uh, queries of Sign Federate coupled with uh, Elasticsearch features. And with this, you can achieve very interesting, uh, I think, uh, query expressiveness. Also, I have presented you uh, how the semi-join and inner join indices work uh, internally. And finally, uh, we want to introduce different APIs, for example, a graph API that will allow you to do different graph metrics like uh, centrality, an API for profiling uh, requests with uh, joint queries. Uh, we are currently working on the uh, updated uh, query planner, which will be able to select the most optimal joint uh, algorithm, regardless of the complexity of the request. And finally, we want to, uh, we want to introduce an, a novel type of join, which is the spatial join. With this, you will be able to express a join over multiple dimensions. And with this, I conclude uh, this talk. So thank you, for, thank you very much for listening. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Very, very interesting and detailed talks. We have plenty of time for questions. Uh, Yes, sir. Yes, please always wait for the microphone. So, thank um, Hello. Thanks hello. for the presentation. Um, I, I was wondering, um, do you have a like a query rewriter, query optimizer module? Uh, how do you handle uh, filters, for example, that are in the main query and that need to be pushed into one or other index? I mean, you need like in databases, like in relational databases, somehow to rewrite the initial query to, to optimize the execution plan. Yeah. How does it work? So yeah, we have a query planner, which will take the request that you have, and then we will figure out what filters have to be, uh, for example, if you have to join index A with index B, we will figure out what filters have to be uh, executed over index A, what filters have to be executed over index B. So then we will, uh, the, like uh, the, I had this slide. Where was it? Yeah, this one, for example. So here you have, you have the, the, set, the search with a set of filters that you have to apply on that index. You have this, uh, another set of filters with the other search that you have to apply on the different index. So this is figured out by the, play, the query planner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It will take care of yeah, uh, whether or not you have to push down, whether or not you have to apply a filter uh, on that index or not, because not all filters uh, should, be, uh, should be executed on the, at this level. Yeah. <coughs> uh, you've said that initially you were using a row-based reads without hitting a CPU cache, and you switched to column-based reads. Yeah and starting hitting the cache. What was the performance gain from this move? So in this benchmark, we have seen like at least uh, twice as fast. Like I had this other benchmark at the, at the end. But yeah, here, from here to here, we have seen uh, in this uh, large scale benchmark of 15 billion documents. For you are not reading 15 billion, but at least in this benchmark, we have seen uh, uh, at least uh, half of the time taken by the queries. So this was yeah, quite quite neat. There was a gentleman behind you first. Hi, uh, Hello? I have a question about uh, uh, the columnar processing. Uh, you said that for cache efficiency, you use uh, columnar representation for joins. Uh, I have a couple of questions around that. Uh, are you using something like Arrow? For columnar? Yeah, we are using Arrow for uh, simplifying yeah, oh, okay. the, the representation of data. Intermediate representation. Yeah. OK. And if you're using Arrow, then uh, when you apply the filters, like the next level, so the first level document style filtering makes sense. 
then you do the hash join and join, and then you are, during that phase, you are converting everything to an in-memory arrow representation. Then you go back to the uh, filter again, and there you mentioned that it's again like a document-based model for filtering. Yeah. Uh, uh, so how does arrow map there to that? Like, but because it's still like a columnar filtering, right? Because one, it's, it's an arrow. Yeah. If you convert it to document based, which means there is a serialization, deserialization overhead. Yeah. So for just uh, the start for people who don't know, Arrow is a Apache project which brings a, a interesting uh, representation of data in OFIP. Yeah. And yeah. So first, when you read data from the index, we populate this uh, data into OFIP. Yeah. Then this is serialized. Uh, the vectors are ser yeah, the columns are serialized, sent to the nodes, and then yeah, we get the result back. And what happens is that we have a, que a Lucene query, uh, effectively, that will read the, the data that uh, the node received. So the shard is in the one, one node. You send the result of the join back to this node. Then in that query, you will get the set of documents that were matching the join. And what you will do is that uh, the, Lucene, the Lucene query will uh, reread the subset of documents that you have stored there, so it will make like you know a, a lookup uh, into this uh, data into this uh, OFIP memory, and yeah, so this is in integrated with the Lucene API with this iterator based API. So we will have, yeah, each time you will say okay, is, uh, this document is in the set, yes or no? Okay, let's go to it or skip it or skip it over. Oh, I see. And so, uh, what do you do when uh, when you map it back to Elasticsearch or Lucene? Is there uh, you have to convert from the Lucene arrow data structures again to the Lucene data structures? There, is there a serialization deserialization overhead right there? From sorry, uh, so Can you let's say you computed the join and you got some results. Yeah. Then you return that results to the Elasticsearch API, right? Yeah. Is there a serialization deserialization overhead right there? No. So find, the only serialization is between the the net transport layer serialization, yeah, of course, when you have to send the data between nodes. But then what you have to create is this bit set data structure. So Lucene expects the bit set, and that's it. Yeah. So this is off, uh, on IP, sorry. And there is no, fine, there is no uh, serialization happening between the two. Fine. Yeah, you read, uh, fine. maybe in one aspect it could be serializ fine, serializing, but uh, it's another representation of the data that you have off IP as a bit set uh, data structure that uh, Lucene can understand. Thank you. Um, I had a question about uh, the code. How did you implement this? Because uh, it seems like you integrate very closely with the uh, Elasticsearch. Did you have some challenges or uh, uh, to implement a plugin uh, in Elasticsearch? Yeah, so most of the challenges regard the first, the, the, the search itself. Uh, so we need to kind of uh, hook into different uh, core aspect of Elasticsearch that is not uh, inter internationally open, like uh, the search service uh, that you have to use to execute a search. We need to uh, pass information to it in order to process the join. So yeah, this has to be... Uh, Customized, like you have uh, with a reflection, for example, Java reflection. Uh, I think this is one of the most, the most uh, important one. Uh, for the inner join, recently we will uh, update the code so that it use uh, runtime fields to to facilitate the processing of uh, of of the projected data. But in the past, uh, it, there was no runtime field there when we did that, so we had to do a kind of uh, a bit. Uh, I, not, I, not so ugly, but a bit a key way of, uh, of giving these uh, unknown fields back to, uh, to make these uh, fields known to Elasticsearch. So each time there is a bit of, uh, yeah, you have to go into these uh, this, uh, parts of Elasticsearch that are not essentially open, such service, uh, the mapper service for, uh, for uh, Extending uh, for adding, adding new fields in the index, like what you, when you have to project. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. What about the licensing issues? Uh, Elasticsearch changed the license over these, uh, and if you're using part of it that in the X, X content and so on, are you facing challenges with, uh, with this restriction? No, so we just extend the, for example, like the search service, the, fine, we just extend it, we don't add any other, uh, no, uh, we don't add new c c capabilities to it, or uh, uh, for the, also this part where we have to further yeah, modify, we will put into a separate uh, package and we will, yeah, uh, we will see what to do with it, but yeah. I think there are no more questions, and we thank, thank Stefan once again with an applause. Thank you. Thank you.